get started with demand and supply uh, market equilibrium for today. Yeah. So actually, you know, we need this both in like economics and uh, business as well. Yeah. So what happens here is uh, uh, you can see a sample of the demand curve um, coming to that. But what is demand? So when you we are talking about demand, the yeah, definition of demand, or when you're talking about demand. Uh, demand is particularly the quantity of a product uh, bought at a given price over a period of time. Yeah, so this is the quantity of a product that customers are likely to buy at a given price over a period of time. <clears throat> when talking about demand, we talk about a few other things such as complementary goods, uh, we talk about inferior goods, normal goods, substitute goods. Gradually we will come to know about them and we will all also like uh, discuss that how do they have impact upon such kind of you know like uh, uh, such goods and things like that. So what is the impact of demand they do you know like to uh, what is the impact of demand they do actually these kind of goods or like uh, any kind of other substitutes or complementary products have a, have a, they have a demand of one product yeah so <clears throat> here as you can see the demand curve is uh, left to right leaning so uh, it, it's actually like uh, shows you the demand curve so it's not remember that it's not a, it's, it's, it's a, in real it's not going to be a straight line yeah but usually we draw it this way because of the simplicity yeah in a, usually a demand curve is not a straight line. Yep, the curve actually shows uh, the quantity of the product or service that uh, that will be demanded at given price. So as with nearly demand curve, it slopes downward from left to right. So you know the dim, actually the, dim, the this is because the uh, quantity demanded is likely to be higher at lower prices and uh, lower at a higher price, right? So <coughs> if price increase, demand is likely to fall for most of the product. If price decreases, demand is likely to increase. Yeah, uh, But however, it depends on the product and some other factors uh, as well. So as you can see, uh, we have the price in one axis and quantity demanded in the other axis, right? So we can see the demand and we can see when the price was P3, yeah, the quantity demand was Q3. It means P3, the price seems to be certainly low and the quantity demand increased. Yeah, can you see that? And at P2, where the price was its, at its, uh, the price was at its highest, the quantity demand was, its, uh, was at its lowest. And P1 was just an average price with an average uh, with an average quantity demand. Yeah. So remember, a high price P2 leads to a reduction of quantity demanded, whereas a low price at P3 leads to an increase in the quantity demanded. Yeah. <clears throat> now let's uh, let's look at this. Uh, how do we, you know, like uh, talk about the demand curve movement, the shift in the demand curve? Well, any kind of changes in the condition of demand bring, is about to bring a shift in the demand curve, right? So if demand changes, there is going to be a shift in the curve. So remember, when a demand curve slopes down from left to right, this reflects the in inverse relationship between the price of quantity, uh, price and quantity demanded. So when a demand curve slopes down from left to right, this actually reflects the inverse relationship between price and the quantity demanded. So when the price goes up, the quantity demand goes down. And when the price goes down, the quantity demand goes up. <clears throat> According to the curve, uh, if you consider the D1 to be your actual demand curve, D1 to be your actual demand curve, yeah? 
when the car shifts from D1 to D2, we call it to be an outward shift. We call it to be an outward shift. Yeah? When the curve shifts to the from the D1 to D2. <clears throat> It's not only an out, outward shift, but you could say it to the uh, right side shift because it's shifting on the right side of the existing demand from D1 to D2. An outward shift means that the demand has increased. Yeah. So if there is an increase in demand, there's likely to be an outward shift and the demand curve is likely to move from D1 to D2. Yeah, and if there is an inward shift, if there is an inward shift, if the, D, if the demand curve moves from D1 to D3, it means the demand has decreased. So less is demanded at each market price. <clears throat> so that's what happens with uh, D1, D2, and D3. So when it's when there is an outward shift from D1 to D2, the demand is in, it shows the increase in demand, and it, when there is a sh out, uh, inward shift from D1 to D3, it shows a decrease in demand. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> uh, sorry, excuse me for that. Uh, I'm going to discuss the non-price factors which have its impact on demand. Remember, apart from price, yeah, price is one factor and uh, price is basically uh, a root factor that changes demand of a product, that brings changes in demand of a product. But, you know, there are other factors, other factors apart from price, which we call to be non-price factors, factors which are not price, which leads to a change in demand. One of this <clears throat> is the price of substitutes. Price of substitutes is basically uh, many goods are actually substitute to one another. If you think of Coca-Cola and Pepsi, yeah. If you like, Coca if you see Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, both are substitute to each other, yeah. And if you're considering to buy Coca-Cola, when you find it that it's it's a thirty taka a bottle, and Pepsi, if Pepsi is offering you twenty five taka a bottle, you might be buying Pepsi rather than Coke, yeah. So. Substitute product, the price of the substitute product may have an yeah. impact upon the demand of a product. Yeah, so that can be one thing. Uh, you know, substitute products are, you know, those products, basically when you talk about the substitute products, uh, th these are actually those goods that can be bought as an alternative to others, right? But they they perform the same kind of, uh, they perform, the, they do have the same kind of function yeah so uh, basically what happens <clears throat> price of substitute uh, substitutes actually have its impact on demand then comes the price of uh, complements so when you're talking about complementary goods complement uh, complementary products complementary goods are those goods which are purchased together because they are consumed together for an example, like batteries and toys, yeah, fuel and car. So these products cannot run without each other. Uh, this product needs to be used together. So if if you if there is a rise in the price of fuel, there might be less demand of uh, of cars in the market because. Uh, a higher fuel cost means that your expenses are increasing and you're not buying a car, right? So uh, that, that might be one thing, that prices of complement may have its effect, right, on a particular demand for a particular product. So if, the, if there is an increase in the price of fuel, if there is a dramatic and high increase in the price of fuel, the price of cars are likely to drop. <clears throat> 
changes in the consumer's income. So if there is a there there is a there is a decrease in income, people are likely to buy more inferior goods. What are inferior goods? What are inferior goods? Actually, if you can see, if you think of inferior goods, inferior goods are uh, goods for which the demand will fall if income rises. Yeah, or goods uh, whose in, uh, whose demand will increase if income falls. For an example, think of uh, transport, public transport. Now, when you're earning, when you're earning, if you're earning five thousand a month, you're likely to use the public transport. If you're earning 70,000 a month, you might be using an Uber. If you're earning 1.5 lakhs, you might, be, you might be planning to buy your own car, right? So when your income is increasing, yeah, you, your demand for a public transport is gradually decreasing. Yeah. And when your uh, income is decreasing, your demand for a public transport is gradually increasing. Yeah, so that's that's what is that's how the inferior goods works like, because uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes you know when, uh, I, I will I will always considered uh, pot noodles. Yeah, uh, the pot noodles I always considered them to be inferior goods, right? Uh, even fast food to me, I mean, like if you think of McDonald's uh, abroad. I consider that to be an inferior product as well. That's not a healthy diet. That's a cheap meal you get, right? Rather, uh, uh, in comparison with a full course meal, right? So uh, actually, you know, it's, it's much like inferior. Whenever people are running in a low income, they are they they tend to get uh, that they tend to get actually like uh, che uh, cheaper meals. So that's what that's that's what it is in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, th that can be an inferior good. So the increasing income, if you talk about increasing income, people actually do have its effect on the normal goods, especially luxury goods, right? So that, that's how actually changes in consumer income do have its uh, impact, right? <clears throat> uh, if, if, for example, if wages and salaries go up, people may decide to spend more money going out in restaurants, uh, they may take an extra holiday or maybe may buy a new car. So these are normal goods, right? So goods for which will actually rise, the demand for these goods will rise when income rises. Yeah. So the other thing could be changes in consumer taste, fashion, uh, preferences, or trending. So basically, if you consider clothing and things like that, yeah, uh, the, the, they're likely to change along with time because you see the, the fashion changes and like uh, people doesn't like the same thing uh, anymore. There might be an over period of time, particularly demand pattern change because there is changes in consumer taste and fashion as well. Yeah. Uh, for an example, the uh, growth in demand for four wheel drive cars in many countries is not because an increasing number of people need to drive off, but because increasing, you know, number of drivers find them appealing. Yeah, uh, especially if you think of clothing industry, it's much influenced and strongly influenced by changes in fashion. So in many countries, there are buying uh, seasons for clothes. Many clothes items are bought in season, would be not be, you know, like in demand uh, for the later seasons, right? Uh, you don't buy the you don't buy the same Punjabi. Or the same uh, kurta for you know like Poyla uh, Boisha and Idul Fitr or Ratha, yeah. So that's the same thing, or maybe puja. You don't you don't buy the same same kind of Punjabis, right? So that's that's the, that's the, that's the thing. You, you you do have a change uh, change in taste and fashion for different festivals, uh, maybe say like different seasons and things like that. And whatever is trending, yeah. Uh, what's whatever whatever is going now. Uh, I always use my favorite example of the fidget spinner. It was trending; everyone was buying one, even if they if they never needed one, right? Because it was just trending on the internet. Like every time you open something, you'd see somebody spinning a fidget spinner. I mean, like it went crazy. Yeah. So that could be one thing. Uh, then comes the effect of marketing, demand, advertising, and you know, branding of the product. So. Business actually can influence demand through effective marketing 
branding, pro branding, promotion, and things like that. So uh, that can be one thing that influences the demand, or you know, like products with less uh, branding and promotion may not approach the customer properly. So demographics can be another thing. If you if you consider the distribution of age of the of a population. Uh, Demographics, you know, as you know already, that it, it, it includes anything related to the population. Yeah, this is how uh, the population is having its effect upon demand. So the age distribution of different types of people, number of people, I mean, age groups within a population will matter. For example, if you think of uh, Denmark, <clears throat> as a very common example I use, uh, Denmark have seen likely, you know, like uh, a high growth in its like uh, medical care equipment and things like that, because their aging population is increasing. Actually, it is increasing now as well. So, more elderly people means uh, they need more retirement homes. They need more healthcare support. They need specialist holidays. Yeah. So uh, th that's how demographic was changing. Whereas China. If you think of China, China had young people with uh, loads and loads of money, yeah, young millionaires, some some are maybe billionaires, yeah. So they saw uh, a trendy growth in like uh, in, in, in things like uh, in, in things like you know uh, they, they saw a trendy growth in things like if you, if you think of uh, expensive cars, yeah, Rolls Royce. If you think of, uh, they, they had uh, this uh, Hummer showroom and things like that. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Starbucks, then in expensive uh, uh, branded products, yeah, Louis Vuitton and stuff like that. So basically, that's how demographic do have its impact upon demand, yeah. <clears throat> demand could be like, uh, demand could be also uh, demand could be you know like another thing that could be uh, affecting demand was external shocks such as competition the level of competition within the market uh, the government may influence demand in, in some cases uh, by taxes you know more taxes on a product means the demand is likely to go down less taxes on a product means that the demand for the product is likely to go up economic climate of the country how the economic is going if there's a recession and people are unemployed, there might, might be less demand. They might be buying only necessities. Whereas if, if the economy is booming and people are having more income, more people are employed, they're likely to buy luxury items. So there can be social and environmental factors as well, right? Uh, uh, you know, like demand might be changes. Uh, demand might, be, might, might, might seem to be, you know, like change, uh, depending on the uh, changes in the society. For an example, uh, you know, there has been a, a huge increase in demand for social media. New social websites have emerged as major means of communication nowadays, yeah? So this has actually helped to increase uh, the demand for related services, such as if you think of uh, uh, smartphones uh, and things like that, right? Concerns about the global warming have also changed uh, consumers about uh, uh, consumers and uh, you know consumers attitude towards goods and services basically now con consumers are more aware of carbon emission and things like that so these are actually things you know like uh, social media and uh, other things you know like uh, whatever's trending and going that might, that, that might have a change in the uh, demand of the product and lastly seasonality you know you don't that is the, that's the same thing you don't we don't wear a Christmas sweater you know all year long. You just want it, maybe uh, by the end of December, you'd like to like you'd like to likely to you're likely to wear one, rather than you know all through the year. So you don't have the demand for a Christmas tree or a Christmas sweater all year long. You just you just want it whenever Christmas is around the corner. Yeah. <clears throat> so here we have uh, actually key five things that I've I've already discussed uh, more than this, but. There are only key five things here that uh, has its impact upon demand, and that may shift the demand curve, yeah, to the right or left. Now let's talk about the supply. Yeah, supply. 
Well, as as we discussed earlier, as we have discussed earlier, that uh, demand <clears throat> demand is the quantity of a product bought at a given price over a given period of time. On the other hand, supply is the amount of product that suppliers make available to the market at any given price in a given of price in a given or a given period of time. So this is the amount of goods that suppliers yeah, or producers are likely to offer at a given price over a period of time. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you if you think of a supply curve, if you think of supply and a supply curve, yeah. Uh, a change in price will definitely cause movement to the supply curve. You saw the demand curve. When you saw the demand curve, uh, as I've told you earlier, the demand curve yeah, uh, slopes down from left to right. Yeah, uh, The demand curve slopes down to left to right. But when you talk about uh, the supply curve, the supply curve stops up from left to right, or you could say it stops down from right to left. Yeah, so it's just vice versa. The supply curve actually, you know, like uh, uh, this is because at a higher price, a greater quantity will be supplied to the market. At lower price, if price is low, then supply is likely to fall because people are not making, you know, retailers, wholesalers, producers are not making a profit out of it. Or maybe uh, the profit is not satisfactory to them, right? So uh, a change in price will definitely cause a movement, and we, we, are, we are going to discuss this after I discuss the curve with you. So <clears throat> uh, a rise in the market price brings about an expansion of supply. Producers are responding to the profit motive. Profit motive means that they know if there is increase in price. They're likely to have a bigger profit, or they, uh, they're likely to get, uh, you know, like uh, they're likely to be more profitable. So, therefore, they want to make the profit and they want to supply as much as possible. Yeah. So, if you consider the price to be P1, it's just an average pricing. Yeah. Uh, so, the demand uh, for this, sorry, the quantity supplied for this is average as well. It's just a normal uh, level of, you know, like uh, uh, market assumption. But when you consider it to be P2, I mean, where the price is actually high, right? The price is high at P2. The quantity offered and the quantity supplied to the market is high as well. Yeah. Whereas if you consider P3, where the price is, you know, relatively low and it's actually very low, the quantity supplied and offered is low as well because they're, they're not making sufficient profit. So it's actually a kind of profit driven, uh, profit motive thing. Yeah. So basically, it's it's kind of uh, responding to the profit motive and stuff like that. So uh, when you when you're talking about supply curve, yeah, I do have an example of the price of beef and quantity supplied here. So uh, we got price of beef in one axis and quantity supply of the other axis. So if you think of uh, the supply here, there is an, you can see an inward shift of the uh, market supply curve, which means that the producers cannot supply as much at this point. So if there is a, there is a decrease in supply, it's likely to be an in, uh, inward shift. So the supply curve moves to the left from its position. Yeah, from S1 to S3 moves to the left. The supply curve moves to the left, shifts left side, which we call it to be an inward shift if there's a decrease in supply. Yeah? So if there's a decrease in supply, the supply curve is likely to move to the left. Yeah? And an outward shift happens, you know, when there is an increase in supply. <laughs> the supply curve moves to the right from its position. An outward shift of the market supply of for beef is shown here from S1 to S2, yeah? So the supply curve is shifting from S1 to S2. So 
you know, more can be actually offered and, you know, like settle in this point, uh, point of S1, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, supply. So the supply curve will actually shift if there is a change in non-price factor, which may affect the producers, yeah. Or there can be a price factor as well. So apart from price, what are the other factors that has its effect that, that actually impacts the supply? Let's take a look. Uh, the, the, the things that we need to know before this, yeah. Um, uh, there, there are some something like I'll, I'll just tell you that uh, you know. Uh, remember, just like the demand, uh, supply is often like uh, driven by non-price factors as well. So factors apart from price, apart from uh, uh, apart from price, which uh, leads to a change in supply, could be changes in the cost of production. <laughs> Uh, the, the amount of supply actually depends on the cost of production, right? If there is an increase in wedge rates, raw materials, you know, any kind of energy utility bills, rent, machinery, if they that, that rise, uh, you know, the sellers are likely to reduce supply. This is because, you know, the profits will re be reduced, yeah? A rise in cost will also cause the supply curve shift to the left. Uh, this might be because of availability of the resources as well, because you know, like the however how resources are being uh, like uh, gathered and allocated, uh, there might not be sufficient resources, you know, to produce the product as well. That can be another reason. If there is shortage of some factors of production, such as land, labor, capital, raw materials, and things like that, it will be difficult for the producers to supply in the market. Yeah. <laughs> So that that was that could be one thing. Um, if there is an introduction of technology, uh, a new technology, if if a new technology becomes available, many businesses will actually start to use it in their production processes. Yeah, new technology is usually more efficient than uh, older technology, and actually it will help uh, to lower the cost of production. Uh, you know, increase productivity, and definitely maybe like increase supply. Yeah. Uh, just like the way you, you decide to change your phone because they are backdated, uh, they're they're less productive. You don't want to use them because a lot of app might not be running. So in the same way, whenever the, the company decides to change machineries, it means they're going for a higher productivity. Uh, for example, the old machine may be producing 1,000 units an hour. The new one might be producing 1,500 units an hour, right? Maybe the old one needed the older one needed five operators. The new one needs two operators. Yeah, they are cutting the cost and gaining more productivity. So supply is definitely increasing. Yeah, uh, 